We'll get started with an opening statement from Coach and then go to questions in the room. Coach? Um, man, Colorado's such a good, tough, scrappy team, and they gave us everything we could handle. And, um, you know, obviously it was not a very pretty offensive game, and I apologize to all fans and people watching for that, but um, we said, hey, we have to be willing to win it with our defense and to win ugly. And that's exactly what we found a way to do. Uh, you know, several players didn't have their normal offensive nights, but Charisma is a great example. Didn't have her same offensive night, but if she didn't maintain her composure and her pride in her defense, she wouldn't have been ready to hit that huge three that was such a huge separator. Lauren Betts didn't have her best offensive night. It's a lot of frustration things. But we needed her versus the press to be able to enter the ball and to make that versus their uh, zone buzz defense in the half court. And then that huge steal that she got uh, at the end of the game uh, was just huge. And you have to be able to make other kinds of winning plays. And that's what we had a chance to do. Bottom line being that um, we found a way to win ugly. Um, so I'm really proud of the way that they found a way to come up with the win. Obviously some things that we need to clean up, but I think overall a very intentional, aggressive uh, weekend for us and really pleased to be able to continue to grow with this team. Coach, uh, actually for all of you, um, you know, as you said, not a great offensive game, but the defense uh, was there. You know, what can you say about, uh, I think there was a seven and a half minute stretch, I believe, where you held Colorado to without a field goal. You know, yeah. how proud are you of uh, Huge. Of I mean, I don't know how many kills we, end up with, we ended up with. I know we had five in the first half, and our goal is eight per game, and I think we surpassed that. I know that in the last eight for possessions, they only had one score, and that was those two free throws by Sherrod. So when you're talking about having that kind of defensive um, prowess, uh, especially when your offense, a lot of times when your offense isn't clicking, it's very easy to let that be a distraction to your defense, and really proud of how we finished with that with all guts and doing that with our defense. Do you guys want to add to that? <laughs> I think a big one is communication, um, and we focused a lot uh, on that this week, just uh, talking through um, the entire possession, uh, winning Colorado really well on back cuts, and um, we were just talking about who we're going under and over, and I think we really like tighten up our ball screen defense and communication, like in off, off and on ball actions, which is really good for us. Yeah, and I think just knowing personnel, I think we did a really good job of knowing like, who are the shooters, who can we help off of, and things like that. Um, and I think that's been like a big thing for our team, and I've just seen everyone step up in that. Coach, um, I have two questions first for you. I know you don't want to talk about the turnovers, but what yeah. do you got to do to take care of the basketball? Well, it was terrible. I mean, 24 turnovers, and the ones that really hurt us is the live ball turnovers. Our goal is 12 or under. Um, and, and more than anything, it's eight assists to 24 turnovers. It's the ratio that hurts you so much. It tells you how we weren't creating easier shots for each other on offense. We did not create the catches that we needed to to create the ball movement, which created, would create driving lanes or post needs. And we just were, we were not tough enough to create those kind of uh, situations. So bottom line is, you know, it's a credit. Everybody knows that they were going to play that way. And it's, you know, you look at their scores and you look at other teams' turnovers. Um, that's been a, a trend for a lot of people. But we really are fortunate that um, that tells you, though, how good our defense really was, that even with the 24 turnovers, still holding up at 45 points is pretty remarkable. So, but, you know, bottom line is we, we got we to reverse those numbers, period. And uh, that's going to be a major thing for us, especially going into this weekend. And then my last question for you two young ladies. Do you feel like you learn more from a ugly game as far as the game needs to like, be focused in and playing the game is really smooth? Yeah, I mean, I think we learned a lot from both um, scenarios, but I do think uh, tough games, especially um, uh, tight ones down the stretch, we do take a lot away because you uh, start to realize like how much each, each possession matters, and I think that's where you really like, you see the results. And um, you know, these past two games, the past two weekends, I think we've learned a lot about um, just who we are and the areas that we need to get better, and it's going to help us going into postseason play. Excited. <laughs> 
Hey, um, so for either um, Keith or Krista, um, this was, you know, coming into this weekend, obviously both Utah and Colorado are formidable opponents. Um, what does it mean to you guys and to the team to have come through on this, especially on the tough side like this tonight? Yeah, I think it's really big. I think it gives us a lot of confidence going into this final week of Pac-12 and then the Pac-12 tournament. Um, I think we've been trying to put together a couple of wins, and I think this has been like the first time we've won three in a, three in a row in a really long time. So I think this has just been really good for our team, and it's giving us confidence. Even when we are having like bad shooting nights, like we know that our defense can help sustain, sustain us so that we can win. You know, just wrote to play on, I want to give a shout out to Baron Davis. Um, he was, uh, he had, a, first of all, he had a bake off with Charisma, and you can ask Baron who won, but um, Red Velvet <laughs> definitely won. But he pulled me aside, and something I shared with the team before the game was you need to have the really rough moments to be ready for those moments when it's one and done. And he talked about it in the NBA, rarely does the number one seed, overall seed, make it to the finals and win the NBA championship because they haven't had enough moments, really hard moments to draw on when those tough things come. And there's going to be a time down the road that we're going to have a tough offensive you know, night and we're going to be able to say, hey, remember that Colorado game? We know how to do this. We know how to win with our defense. And I think that's really important. And these will be moments we draw on. And then just a real quick follow-up question. Um, I know this is the end of the season. It's kind of the dog days of the season. Um, how do you two, being the team leaders that you are, kind of regroup and refresh and forget how late in the season is? Um, I would say just like really taking care of ourselves like um, outside of the court when we have our off days and like really using that time to like um, refill our cups because like you said like it's been a long season and like every day starts to feel like the same day so I think especially when we have time off um, just using that time to like refill ourselves so that we can give all of our energy to each other when we're in practice. <laughs> Sorry. So I'm going to get Thank you. Uh, and practice <laughs> Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> you jinxed her. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I did her coach her first went out. Um, when Lauren was out, there was a lot of discussion on finding our own production and kind of talking about Kiki and Charisma trading scoring nights. But, you know, they both combined for the 34 points of your 53 tonight. What can you say about the growth in hunting for shots and um, finding the groove in that way? Well, I think that, um, you know, one of the things that we said to them is that when we were in that stretch, we needed our guards to be much more aggressive, to raise their aggression level. And then when Lauren came back, we didn't want them to revert back to just looking at Lauren. And we need both. And so I think um, Kiki had one of her most aggressive games today. Uh, she got to her pull-up, she hunted for a shot, she got to the cut more, um, she wasn't hesitant on her catch and shoot, but more important to me, some of the plays she made defensively and rebounding wise. And so we need their aggression. And Charisma has been leading us defensively with her aggression all year long, but maintaining her offensive aggression is really, really important. Um, and you know, we, we don't, it's not, it's not the Lauren Beck show, she is an integral part of our team. Um, but I have said ever since the very beginning, I remember after the UConn game, I was sitting in media with these two, and I said, we will go as far as these two take it. And they have risen to every challenge, and I know they're going to take us really far. Um, for Charisma, I did want to ask, you know, with senior night, can you talk a little bit briefly about, you know, coming back for this fifth year, what it's meant to you, and then, you know, getting a win on senior night, what that means to you? Yeah, um, obviously super fun to get a win on senior night because it would be really awkward after we <laughs> did it. Um, but yeah, it, it's mean, it meant a lot to me to come back. I've had so much fun this year. and Even like coming back with Cam um, has been so much fun and having Izzy and Emily and Angela with me along this journey um, and my other teammates as well. But um, I've had the best time and like I'm super grateful to, for the time that I've had here at UCLA. Charisma, uh, coach mentioned that big three late in the fourth. Like, what did you kind of sense from that moment? You guys haven't scored in a really long time. <laughs> so what did you kind of sense with the move of the team and, and what did you see on that play specifically? I just saw no one guarding me, honestly. <laughs> um, but yeah, no one's guarding me and that's a shot that I practice all the time. Um, so I just took the shot and 
Um, for you know, all of you, two accomplishments tonight with this win. Not only do you tie for second place in the Pac-12, but uh, you now have seven wins over uh, top 25 teams, the most in the nation. What can you say about that? Well, I think that that's you know what I believe we're capable of, and um, you know I think that we had a rough spot in the middle. We didn't have all of our players. We weren't all healthy, um, but we're getting back together now. And, and I think there's, I'm really really proud of the different ways we're finding ways to win. You know, I think it's uh, really important we mention Nina and Wally tonight, or Christine Iwala. Um, they were so huge and solid for us. And um, when we have those wins over seven wins over top 25, it's not because of the big, you know, names all the time. It's all the little plays, all the little selfless plays um, that you're willing to make our team win. And um, I think that's why we have to lead the nation in that. So we've got a very selfless team and they're willing to do whatever it takes any given night. We have a phrase we use all the time, sometimes you, sometimes me, always us. And the reality is it's the four letters and getting the dub and whatever we gotta do to make that happen. And I think that's why we've been leading in that uh, category. My last question, Tom, this is going to be the last year of the Pac-12. So when you're going up to the Pac-12 tournament, and then is it coming, what is going to be your fondest memory of playing in the Pac-12? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, this is only my second time playing in the Pac-12 tournament, but I would just say the energy and the environment in the is it's so great to have. tournament but I would say maybe my sophomore year it was COVID and we had beat Stanford they weren't even playing at Stanford I can't remember where it was but it was in Santa Cruz yeah yeah playing there and beating them and we only had like seven players and Cam had just she just had gotten hurt and stuff like that but um yeah I think that or beating USC by 30 that year too at home that was super fun <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, for me, it's really about um, being a part of the rise from of being last of the Power Five um, and then raising up to being first, you know, of the Power Five conferences and just being able to um, say thank you to as many people behind the scenes as possible. And also the alumni before us, uh, we, we walk in the path that they blazed and, you know, people like you know, I remember it was, I think, my second year here, and we got together a day early, all the coaches from our spring meetings said, how are we gonna raise this thing from last to first? And we agreed on like three guiding principles, and now to see it come to fruition and have sustained excellence, I'm really humbled and proud to be a part of that, and really wanna say thank you to all the people that came before us and all the people behind the scenes that make it happen. Anything else? Really appreciate you guys being here. Thanks so much. And we'll see you back in the first and second rounds of the NCAA tournament. Thank you. Thank you.